Welcome back. We have a knife here. Um, this has been a fun week. Uh, I sold some knives this week. Got to talk with a bunch of you out there uh, about the knives. Um, needed to make some room just physically for uh, additional knives. Um, so yeah, it was good to, uh, to just be chatting with either viewers or people in the community. I'm just uh, opening this off screen because this is in here from DLT Trading. Always uh, amazes me how fast these guys get their shipping over, but they always have a, a receipt in here too, so I gotta take it out before I uh, unbox the knife. No trickery, I promise. Really excited about this one. This is uh, my first from this maker. This is something I've been trying to do lately is to bring on knives from <laughs> George Knives. I don't know if this is pronounced Les George, Le George, whatever. This is my first um, knife maker out of Mississippi, you know, US based. Interesting, they got a full packaged, um, sealed package here. It's not that common in the knife industry, which is interesting. Um, but using the uh, just the old uh, CJRB Pyrite uh, BB unboxing here. I thought I would put that one to the test a little bit lately. It's been doing a good job. So I picked up the ESV flipper. They went on uh, DLT. Not apparently the hottest knife of all time. It's uh, been a few days and I want to say there's still... Oh no, it's out of stock now. Okay, so it did... The drop lasted a few days. Um, <clears throat> looks like they're gone now, though. At least this particular model. Just doing a quick, quick check. Um, always good to be able to share a little bit of kind of what the demand is. Yeah, this particular one that I got is sold out. The other two are still in stock. Interesting. Well, I guess I chose right. <clears throat> oh, that was interesting. Not much in there. Nice little soft case and a knife. And it's a little smaller than it looks on the screen. And I, you know, read up on it and saw the size and I was like, wow, that thing just looks bigger than what it is. And sometimes knives have that effect, which is interesting. Um, but this is a little guy, just a little flipper. So let's, uh, let's give it a flip. Now, the first thing I'm noticing right away is it's much shinier looking here than it looked in the picture. I think they, uh, the picture made it look like a working finish. Like it really looks matte in the picture. And if I read it, it says handle material titanium. It doesn't say handle finish, blade finish with stone wash. But anyways, this is cool because it's shinier and kind of nicer than I thought it was going to be. Um, you know, a titanium frame lock, not always my favorite. But what I noticed right away is the pocket clip and the frame, the way it all works, it's almost like an inset frame lock because it's very hard to end up I mean, you can be on there for sure, but if you're gonna use a flipper, there's no reason that your top finger is gonna be on there. So as long as this is resting on the frame and not on the lock, you're gonna get a really nice, should have a really nice flipping experience. Let's get it the first flip. Oh, wow. So the quick thing I noticed when I did that just now, and uh, beautiful, beautiful finish on the blade again, did not look, it looks like a working finish in the pictures. So DLT, uh, word to the wise. Man, this knife is way better looking than, uh, I may post this right away just to, uh, to kind of help out. Cause this is way better looking than it is on the website. And uh, I think if people knew that it looked like this, these things may not still be in stock. I assume the other ones are the same also, um, even though they don't have this, uh, you know, uh, what is this one called? I just forgot the name of the uh, the pattern. Even though it doesn't have the sweep scales, this is called the sweep pattern. But anyways, the first thing I noticed when I did that and just nice lock up there um, for, you know, a brand new knife. Um, whew, that is solid too. Um, it was really easy to deploy. A little bit of lock stick there, I think though. Let's see if that ends up going away pretty quickly or not. Just felt a little pop there. That could have been because I was messing with it though. Let's see. Oh, wow. You can even see I failed it there. It's so, the detent is super light on it. 
Now, is it the detent? Okay, maybe it, maybe it was me. Let's try again. It's just really easy flipper. It's interesting because the detent's not bad. It's pretty strong, but you know, I think it's I think it rewards just loading up a little ahead of it. Because I have a tendency personally to like kind of come in from the side of my button locks instead of properly being on the back and either light switching or pushing really hard. I have a tendency to kind of lazy off to the side like this. It doesn't reward you very much for that. So let me probably do it the proper way here. It's just very easy and light. Now I'm wondering, you can hear that pop when I undo the lock bar. You hear that pop? I'm wondering if that's gonna go away or not. Um, so the cool thing here is that detent ball. Interesting, is that replaceable? Anyways, um, the, the lock bar is not replaceable as far as I can tell here, but the detent ball might be because there's a hole here. I don't know. Someone may know better than me and can put in the comments. That's a nice little knife. How's that pocket clip? Pretty nice. It's definitely strong. I have a feeling it's kind of hard to get over. Yeah, it's pretty hard to get that over the pants. But you could bend that out a little maybe and be fine. I'm not a big fan of doing that because I like to keep my knives very factory as a collector, but... That's a sweet little knife. Now, 450 is a lot of freaking money for a little flipper. I mean, you could basically get that. I mean, you can basically compare it to this knife right here. In fact, $50 knife, right? It's Chinese, but um, that's not a lot more knife here in weight, finish, or anything. Now, it is titanium. <laughs> Uh, versus steel on this guy, but you could, I mean, they have this for like 200 bucks at titanium. It's half the price. Um, let's have a look. Let's just uh, take a look at the website. So blade length, 2.625 inches. Overall length, 6.5 inches when it's out here. Just comparing it to the CGRB Pyrite. Very tiny little knife, right? Um... What else do I have around here for some comparisons? What else do I have? That small tactile rock wall. That'd be a good one for this. Also a titanium US made new knife, but they do it for $350. Also Magna Cut, by the way. Magna Cut. $350 or $300 rather in this, this version. You know, maybe you get the frag pattern and it would put it up to about three, 330 or whatever. Um, that is uh, 450 with that uh, pattern on it. 425 if you have the uh, plain finish. Um, Spider Co. Pair 3. Good comparison knife. I keep knocking it around. So smaller than that. So I'm not going to even bother pulling out the pair of 2. We Banter. Great, great comparison for this one. Don't pull that one out all the time, but size-wise I'm just seeing... Very, very similar in size. If you know that knife, you know that knife pretty well. <clears throat> um, you know, becoming super popular would be the uh, Demco 8020.5. A much bigger knife. I'll even put it on the uh, far side to give the <laughs> Le George as much advantage as possible. And uh, still much, much smaller. And Benchmade Bug Out full size. And much more relevant here. Benchmade Bug Out Mini. And I'm going to swap these because uh, the Mini will show you just how not huge this guy is. So it's small. It's a very small knife. Um, let's give it a, a little look over and run around and see what we think. All right. So one of the first things I like to do is check out the feel in hand. It is very small and there's no choke up at all. There's a sharpening choil and that's it. 
So that would probably be one of my biggest criticisms so far is that is like a three and a half finger knife for an adult male in the United States. That's definitely a criticism for me. Um, really nice in the draw cut position, although it is kind of a, what is that, a clip point? I'm not even sure, but I think that's a clip point. Uh, I think I call it a clip point. It does have a nice little um, position there, and it's a pretty good position here. If you get choked up on it, I could see, you know, finding some comfort does feel like I'm a little behind it when I'm in this position. So getting up into here really feels like you got a lot of control over it. Um, but man, that is kind of a three and a half finger knife there. You, all they'd have to do would be just pull that out to the very end. I realize, you know, kind of why they're doing this is this is the very minimum. And what's kind of interesting is when the blade comes out, does it? It, it sort of overshoots the back of the handle even, which is interesting. That is not super choice. Just in case for some reason you had your hand in there or something like, not that you'd want to be holding it like this while deploying it, but that's kind of weird to have that overshoot the bottom of the handle. It's just so slightly. But again, my criticism here is this this handle, you know, all you had to do was take it out another eighth of an inch, quarter inch, quarter inch longer, and then be kind of straight. And it actually kind of balanced the look of the knife a little more. It, it, I don't know, it's pretty well balanced looking, but like if you just brought it out to here, you get the full handle. So I'd say for me, you either Give it a finger choil and make the whole knife half an inch longer, you know, so you can get up on it. Like that would solve the problem really nicely. Or you give the knife another quarter inch. Otherwise, this is, you know, kind of not a knife for comfort wise for the average American, I'd say. Interesting. Let's check out the drop shettiness. One of my favorite aspects. Some nice standoffs. I like it's it's very simple, right? Very simple knife. Not like radically drop shut out of and you kind of double clutch a little bit because you know that kind of falls down on your finger, it doesn't hurt or anything, but you can't really there's there is a second catch point in here when the uh, blade hits the ball. The detent ball there. So Think about that. You're trying to drop shut it. You're having to try and hold that out until it gets past that point. So not the best uh, shutting action that I've seen. Easy to do one-handed, don't get me wrong. There's plenty of ways to do it like that. You know, if you get it like that, you can go, but not the best shutting action starts back starts with the pop and then continues kind of hits here and then it has to go past that to go down so that's not my uh you know favorite really nice on the flipper um let's try a push button style it's a little hard because you can't it's not a strong detent so you're not you can get it you know, with the knife facing up in there, if you do it this way, you're fine, right? Like, I, I do do these videos trying to face the camera, which means the knife is always pointed straight up in the air, which isn't necessarily a real world. Real world, you're probably going to be doing the knife sideways most of the time. That's probably more likely. I don't know. But, um, yeah. I'd call it good. Very good. Not great, you know, this is just not one of those, you know, it's a very robust feeling knife, especially for the size with the blade length like this and the thickness and everything. There's a lot of balance feel to it, honestly. Like, you see how quickly, what's cool about that is the balance point is right on the clip. So it's very, you know, if you, 
if your finger is in the right spot, it is balanced. That's, that's great. So I can basically just open my hand into a balance. It's a little handle heavy, but like, mm, depends how you're holding it really. So good balance. Um, very robust looking blade. Nice looking knife. Let's get a, a little close up here. Really nice stonewashed finish, both on the blade and on the handle. And on the pocket clip. So yeah, a good knife, I'd say. Not a great knife. You know, do with that from, from my perspective. For me, a good knife, not a great knife. For someone, this might be the perfect knife. Smaller hand uh, and or closing isn't your, your thing. But I don't like when it kind of get, gets caught up like that. So, yeah, good, not great. Um, for the price, I'd say it's overpriced. But, you know, if you're looking to get into this maker for not too expensive, it is a good way to do that, which is exactly what I was trying to do is see you know, what's he all about? And I see a lot of what he's doing right here for sure. And I've seen some of the bigger knives are really well liked. So I'd say one of my things to do would be to go check out one of the bigger ones. I think that'd be a, a good exercise for me. So yeah, neat knife. Uh, glad, to, glad to get it in hand. Thanks DLT for the quick shipping. And uh, I think that's all for now. Please comment. I don't know a lot about it, so feel free to inform if I missed something. But, um, you know, overall, I'd say great blade steel, decent blade shape, decent pocket clip, uh, decent deployment. It does everything well. Nothing like mind blowing, the best I've seen. Very smooth on the flipper. I will give it that. That is one of the smoothest flipping actions I felt. Uh, if it had just a touch more detent, I don't know if I would take some of the smoothness away, but it would make it, you know, kind of a little more consistent on the deployment. I, you know, failed it a few times during the video, and hey, over time that actually might work its way in too, so you never know. But love the minimalism on the case, you know, just give me a knife in a bag, bam, love that. And uh, all for now, so. Please like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.